Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. This session of our Oktoberfest Fall Mining Showcase will feature Kucho Copper. Kucho Copper is focused on expanding and developing the Kucho Copper Zinc Gold Silver Project, which consists of one mining lease and 55 mineral exploration claims covering over 24,000 hectares located in Northern British Columbia. From the company, we have Vince Sirachi, president and CEO, and he's also a director. I'll note that if questions or if attendees have any questions throughout the presentation to submit them using the Q&A link and we'll get to them after the presentation. With that, I'll turn it right over to Vince to walk you through the story. Thanks, Taylor. <clears throat> and hello, everybody. Thank you for attending this morning. Um, this will be an abbreviated presentation. Um, so if uh, you have, if you want to take a look at um, the full presentation, it will be on our, our website. So Cucho Copper <clears throat> is a development stage copper project here located in BC. Just a little bit on the timelines and quickly, you know, we, for those of you who don't know, we acquired this asset at the end of 2017 from Capstone Mining. Um, so they had it uh, kind of in their in their inventory for some time. We paid 29 million Canadian for it, and you know really saw an opportunity um, to take this asset to the next level. Um, we had a 2017 pre-feasibility study done on it <clears throat> with economics showing a post-tax NPV of 265 million and IRR of just under 28 uh, percent. That was priced at 275 copper at the time. So, you know, we've, we've done um, a lot of work, and I'll talk more about this, uh, moving that to the next level, which would be the feasibility study. Um, in the interim, we basically, and on completion of the financing of the asset, we brought in wheat and precious metals. It was a multi-pronged approach there with respect to a financing package, which totaled over $100 million that comprised of equity debt um, and a streaming component to that. <clears throat> we recently updated our resource that was in July of 2021. Um, and you'll see our measured and indicated at uh, just under 23 million tons at 2.26 copper equivalent, which equates to just over a billion pounds of copper equivalent in resource that we will be using in our feasibility study. A little bit on the management team. Uh, this team was put together um, and tailored specifically for the acquisition of this asset and what we needed to do to move it forward. Um, so lots of good technical experience um, with respect to VMS deposits, moving, moving projects like this through what was required to get it through feasibility studies. So um, from exploration to uh, feasibility data collection and on the engineering side. And same with the board. Um, Stephen Quinn uh, used to be the president and CEO of Sherwood Copper. He used to own this asset <clears throat> before they merged with Capstone and always believed that um, this asset should be put in production. Bill Bennett was the ex-BC Mines Minister. So good guidance with us uh, and moving forward with this asset with respect to permitting and community relations. So good capital markets experience, <clears throat> a great permitting team, a great technical team to move this asset uh, on the path that it's on. Our cap table right now, uh, shares issued, uh, 98 million shares issued. Uh, we've got Capstone at about 10% ownership, Wheaton at about 7.5% ownership. Um, very little institutional ownership uh, to date on this. Um, you know, it's been financed over the last couple of years, more with the high net worth and, and retail audience. So um, I believe that is an opportunity now moving forward. A little bit on the Wheaton financing. Um, so they did, uh, it was about $4 million in equity into our round, um, our, our financing that we did to acquire this project. They provided us with <clears throat> $20 million in debt um, <clears throat> as well uh, towards that acquisition price. Uh, I must note that, you know, that is something Wheaton has never done before um, in, in uh, providing that debt facility to help us acquire this asset. And then <clears throat> the stream which we did on the precious metal component only. Uh, so that's about 8% of the revenue of the project. Uh, that was valued at 65 million US dollars, uh, 7 million of which they advanced to us already <clears throat> to help with the feasibility study. And the rest of it will come towards development capital. <clears throat> We're required to deliver um, the first 5.6 million ounces of silver, 50,000 ounces of gold, and then that reverts to 66%. So we do get to keep some of that, uh, that upside on the precious metal side um, in the future. 
a little bit about where we are. <clears throat> this is northeastern British Columbia, so about 100 kilometers east of Dees Lake. Um, important to note, there's a number of um, development stage and operating projects in the region, so uh, a very development friendly region uh, within British Columbia. Um, you see Red, Red Chris, Galore, Kames, um, Bruce Jack, etc. The First Nations, um, this is overlap territory with Taltan and Casca, and I would say that these are the two most pro-mining um, sophisticated, technically sophisticated commercial First Nations in British Columbia. We're lucky to be in their territory. Um, we have exceptional relationships with them that we've, um, that we uh, have built up over the last couple of years, which obviously is very, very important. Um, you'll see in the last, uh, in the recent <clears throat> time period here, we put out some news with respect to moving this project forward through permitting and beginning engagement with respect to negotiating um, you know, agreements with the nation's uh, economic participation agreements. I guess up to note here, um, you know, the project is <clears throat> somewhat remote, but very accessible. Um, we've got a 100 kilometer long uh, ground access um, to, the pro to the property. Um, that ground access connects to the um, highway, uh, highway 37, which is 400 kilometers from the Port of Stewart. That's where we ship our concentrates from. We've got an existing field camp, an existing airstrip, <clears throat> and the, the territory is very benign, very subtle terrain, very rolling hills. The access road getting into this, again, very, very flat, um, easy access. That will be upgraded to the Hall Road in the feasibility study. <clears throat> so, you know, we will still be the, the, probably the most remote part about this is that we will still be running LNG and diesel to power the site. Um, we could run um, power lines to it, but it, the economic or business case doesn't quite make sense to do that. This is what our, <clears throat> what our deposits look like. Again, uh, these are VMS lenses. So we've got the main, the sumac and the ESO. Main outcrops at surface being the largest of the, uh, of the lenses. Um, and SO um, to the right, uh, being the deepest and the highest grade. Uh, in this upcoming feasibility study, uh, it will be main and SO that will be in this feasibility study. SUMAC is primarily, well, all in the inferred category, but that is definitely upside potential um, for the future and will basically be uh, potential for extended mine life. And a little bit about our... Um, our resources, again, I mentioned uh, just under 23 million tons at 2.26 copper equivalent. Um, so, you know, what most would consider a good high grade um, copper zinc deposit. The upside potential with respect to Cucho is, you know, around the main lens um, that, you know, we will now be open pitting. That was, um, I think, a big a big uh, shift in focus and um, shift in gears towards what we'll be doing in the feasibility study. Um, as as uh, in the past, it was contemplated as an entirely an underground operation, uh, which is important as it relates to mining costs and uh, eventually overall project economics. Uh, so you'll see um, these are the kind of near resource brownfields opportunity with respect to the project that we are assessing right now and we'll be driving hard on these in the coming year. Um, so we're looking at um, uh, pit expansion potential around Maine um, and down dip potential. Those are represented uh, by points one, four, and three. We've got this big gap between Maine and Sumac that historically has only had one drill hole into it. So we think there's um, potential to kind of uh, have to see that mineralization uh, continue. Um, then in the sumac lens, as I mentioned, um, there's approximately 10 million tons of inferred there at around one and a half percent copper equivalent. So we think that's an excellent opportunity to extend mine life on this project, which is uh, obviously um, valuable, uh, it, but that will not be reflected in the upcoming feasibility study. Um, and then and ESO, as I mentioned, um, has got um, you know, historic drill holes 300 meters to the west which has hit ore grade intercepts. Now, given the depth of ESO, um, it doesn't make sense to be drilling that off the surface. That will be something that will be uh, looked at uh, when we're down there uh, underground mining it. 
Also on the greenfield side, <clears throat> we've got an extensive land package. The geology, the Kucho formation, um, the mineralized formation repeats and folds itself multiple times through our claims position. And you can see that represented by the dashed lines. This project hasn't seen any exploration, um, Greenfields exploration since 1990. We've got a number of targets uh, that we will be working up that we believe will be um, drill ready again in the coming new year. And I guess what's you know, important to note that historically, uh, most if not all VMS districts around the world tend to grow in size. Um, you know, right now we've got the SO Sumac and main deposit hosted along that one mineralized trend. So we're pretty optimistic about, um, you know, the potential for uh, additional discoveries on our, on our project. <clears throat> Upcoming catalysts, you know, the biggest one obviously here is the feasibility study. And we are looking at that over the coming couple of weeks. Um, this is obviously an important milestone for you know, any project, um, but I think especially Cucho, as you know, this will be um, you know, a document that obviously de-risks the asset um, immensely, but you know, for this asset, it's going to be something that um, has been a long time coming as it's uh, sat in a number of different corporate hands over the years. Um, it was never really taken to fruition, never really, had the ability to kind of show the opportunity with this asset. So we're, we're excited to put that out. I think it's, it's been a long time coming and I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. Uh, with respect to permitting, uh, we're well down the path. Again, um, now beginning uh, economic participation agreements with our nations. Uh, we would be, at this point, we did file our section 11 about a year and a half ago. So uh, we're ready to kick off into the EA process. And as I just recently uh, mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a complete assessment of um, our exploration opportunities in the coming year and plan to be doing that um, in 2022. And just a quick summary, again, uh, you know, it's a high grade copper zinc project located in BC. It's a top tier jurisdiction, a very safe jurisdiction uh, being in Canada and Northern British Columbia and in a very mining friendly uh, part of that. Uh, we've got good infrastructure, uh, permitting's on its path uh, with exploration upside potential and strong financial support uh, from wheat and precious metals. So, you know, we believe the next couple of months are going to be a very, very exciting period for the project. Um, this is a good asset. These assets are hard to find uh, with respect to the copper space. And I think it's going to lend itself to a number of different strategic opportunities um, post feasibility study. Thank you. And if anybody has any questions at this point, please feel free to ask. Perfect. Thank you very much, Vince. Uh, so we do have a good question that's come in. Just wondering about uh, the anticipated production schedule and what order mm -hmm. the deposits will be mined. And, you know, will you be mining the, the open pit before moving underground? Yes, it'll it'll start with Maine. Um, obviously, um, that's the lowest hanging fruit. Um, and we expect we will then be driving down to Esso very, very quickly expect ESO to kind of come online within the first um, two years, about two years uh, to get development down there. And then <clears throat> you'll see it, um, you'll see a blend of ore, uh, ESO being the highest grade substantially higher than Maine. So we wanna get that online as quickly as possible. Um, so you'll see, um, you know, within the first, between two and three years, um, ESO come online while we're open fitting Maine and blending that ore. Okay, great. And um, will you, so will you be going underground at the main deposit to access uh, the uh, SO deposit? No, it'll be, um, it'll be driven, and I'll just put this up. <clears throat> it'll be driven uh, from Maine. It'll go basically on a decline, literally within 50 to 90 meters in front of the sumac lens, straight down to SO. That'll be the decline going down to SO. Okay, so you'd go to underground and main once you're done the open pit phase there, is that the Correct, idea? correct. And it's a very, very small portion of main um, that will lend itself uh, or remain for the underground extraction piece of it. Great, okay. So a couple seconds left. Uh, are you open to any JV opportunities? I will be looking at a number of different opportunities. There's been a number of parties over the last couple of years, you know, waiting for this. Um, 
And obviously we will look at and assess um, whatever uh, uh, opportunity um, makes sense uh, as you know, something being accretive to uh, the company um, and the best driver around returns for us, obviously shareholders. Perfect. Thank you very much, Vince, for presenting the Cucho Copper story to us. Thank you.